I'm Alex with Storyline Travel. At Storyline Travel, we're family travel specialists working to create memorable experiences through travel. And today we're going to talk about our experience in boarding Carnival's Dream at Galveston, Texas. Hi, we're really glad you're here. In this video, we're going to talk about our experience boarding the Carnival Dream out of Galveston. But before we get started, we ask that you give this video a like and press the, the red button down there to subscribe. We're really trying to get our subscribers up and we'd really appreciate it if you would do that for us. So let's dive in. The embarkation process, as they call getting on the ship, started before we even left home. We had to do an online check-in in which um, we went through all of the reservation, we made sure that all of our documents were in order. We had the proper identification and entered that into the system. And then we selected a time to show up at the port. In addition, Carnival had us, uh, re requested us, I should say, to print out luggage tags and a boarding pass. Now, I'll get to the boarding pass in a minute. That was something that really tripped us up. But we printed out the boarding pass it's an eight and a half by 11 and it shows you a way to fold it so that it looks like any other luggage tag that you would have. And then we fasten them um, to our luggage. We use a stapler to hold them in place and then we were ready to go. Now we live near the Galveston port, so we drove in. We highly recommend if you're flying into Galveston or you're driving more than four hours, to come on into the Houston Galveston area the day before your cruise. That way you have no problems getting into um, Galveston and into the port for your cruise. So the day it arrived, it's time to go. And we took our luggage down to Galveston. Um, we recommend in Galveston that you schedule parking ahead of time and prepay it. Um, on cruise mornings, when a ship is leaving, it can get really crazy and parking lots can fill up fast. For us, we like to be really close where we don't have to do a shuttle. And so I had prepaid for parking that was in walking distance to the terminal. Once we parked and, and got our luggage, we walked over to the porter stand and handed our luggage to a porter. Uh, a tip is customary for someone handling your luggage, and it freed us up to not have to drag our bags all over the ship until our stateroom was ready. We did have a day bag, each of us, with a few items, and we headed to the check-in. Now, here's where the boarding pass is important. And by the way, we did not print out the boarding pass beforehand. Um, it, was a, it was a big mistake on my part, and so we had to get pulled aside and have boarding passes printed for you. To make your life easier, go ahead and pre-print your boarding pass before you get to the terminal for Carnival. Once we um, got our boarding passes, we went through security. We did do uh, a check-in with our passports. We used passport to go in. You may also use a, a picture state ID with a legal birth certificate, the one with the raised seal, not the pretty one with the little baby feet. Uh, you need to make sure you have the, the original uh, birth certificate. But for a closed in cruise, meaning that you're leaving the US and returning to the US, you can use a state picture ID and a birth certificate. So we scanned those in and then went through security and security was a metal detector. They did x-ray our day bag. Uh, we went through uh, security and then we had brought some soft drinks with us. Uh, they had to be cans or boxes. Uh, limit is approximately 12 per person. For us, we had brought 10, so we were well under that. But there was a separate screening area where we needed to go and show the uh, cans to a security officer to verify, I think, both the count and the size. So 12 ounce is the max on the size of the can or container that we could bring in. It was a relatively painless process, but it was a little chaotic. So it was one table and there were three or four security lines all feeding into that one table. A little bit of confusion. Um, also note that when you're packing that in your day bag, 
make sure it's easily accessible. It's not buried under a lot of things because we did have to take it out of our day bag and show what we had. Most people just had a carton of sodas that they carried by hand on through. That was easy to pass through. For us, we ended up packing it. I don't know that I would do that again. So just a heads up, we did have to actually pull it out and show what we had and what we were taking on board. Great, now we're through security. We rounded the corner and went to the Carnival Reservation Desk. At this point, we needed our boarding pass again to, to scan in, and we did need our passport again. And each one of us in our traveling party were all checked in. They made sure that we had a, a photo uploaded as part of the check-in process, which we did. They matched those photos to the um, ID for us, the passport. Once all that was done, then we proceeded to a second level. We used an escalator. There was also an elevator uh, available. Uh, to a waiting area. So as part of the check-in process with the receptionist, we received a boarding group number. And we went into a waiting area. We sat for, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then um, boarding numbers were called. The earlier group numbers consisted of not just those that had shown up early, but also suite members, and higher level uh, VIFP uh, loyalists, which is Carnival's loyalty program, if you were at the top tier, you got the earlier groups. And so there was one to two lines for um, boarding that were dedicated to, again, suite members or the highest loyalty levels, and then a separate three lines that were for everyone else. We were part of the fourth group that boarded and so once our uh, boarding group was called, we went in, scanned our passes, and started boarding the ship. At this point, we went on to the, uh, the gangway, started to load um, on board the ship, and about halfway through, there was a, an area where they had a couple of backdrops set up for pre-boarding photos. And, um, there were a few people who took advantage of this. It was, it was hit or miss, which is uh, typical of most cruise ships. And, um, and then we went on to the ship. Uh, one unique thing about this, uh, this particular boarding of the ship is they only used one gangway, even though they had um, a gangway that had a second, uh, second branch, if you will, it was cut off and they forced everyone onto one gangway. We boarded the ship on deck three into the Dream Lounge and, and walked in, uh, meted by uh, crew members who directed us to muster stations and answered any questions that we had uh, getting on board. We were informed at that point that it was important that we went ahead and check in on our muster stations, that state rooms would not be ready until approximately 1.30, and that lunch would be provided on the Lido deck which is where the buffet is located. Um, good to note on the Carnival Dream, deck three does not have a, um, a hallway that will go all the way to aft. And so we, our muster station was on deck three, but it was deck three aft. So we had to go up to deck four, down to the back of the ship, and then go back down to deck three to check in for our muster station. So be aware, um, deck three does not pass from the front to the aft, and you do have to go up to deck four or five to be able to go from inside the ship from the front to the back of the ship. So we went to aft. Our muster station was E3. We're in the main dining room um, on the third level, and there was about uh, 20 of us that had gathered once it didn't seem like there would be anybody uh, joining our party for a few minutes. They did do a demonstration on how to put on a life jacket and uh, talk to us about safety, about mustering. And then once everyone in that group uh, had seen the whole presentation by the crew member, we had our boarding passes scanned and we were validated that we had attended the, um, the muster drill and we were at that point free to either have lunch or to explore the ship. One note, we travel with a special needs member in our family. 
And because none of the groups that we were with had children, there was no discussion of armbands that could be provided. I did later go back to the muster station and visit with the crew member that had done the presentation to retrieve an armband for our special needs daughter. This is an important note. Both children and those who need additional assistance, especially with any kind of uh, cognitive disability, it's good to have these armbands in case there is an emergency. The armband has the muster station and a crew member can lead them to the muster station if you get separated from your guardian or parents or our responsible party. So we did get one of those armbands um, for our daughter to make sure that we had in case of an emergency. Now it's time to explore the ship. We enjoyed uh, going up to the top decks to see what uh, hot tubs, swimming pools, different activities were available. And at this point, we um, went to the buffet in the, um, the Lido Deck buffet area called The Gathering and had a, a really good lunch. Um, to my knowledge, the, the Lido Deck area was the only area that was serving food for lunch. Um, we did have lunch, and by the time we finished exploring the top decks and, and having lunch, it was 1.30 and we headed to our stateroom. Uh, when we got to our stateroom, we did have an envelope in the uh, mailbox area near our door that had our, um, our sign and sale cards, and we were able to enter in the room. We went through the room, made sure everything was working in an order that we wanted. Uh, there were three of us, so we needed to make sure that the stateroom attendant knew that the, uh, the sofa bed needed to be converted to a bed to a third uh, for three of us. And after a few minutes in the room and going around, we did meet our room steward, have that conversation. That was really the only change that we had. And um, after dinner that first night, we did have the third bed made up and, and it was great for the, the rest of our uh, vacation. And finally, um, embarkation's not complete if uh, in, in our mind, you don't go up to the, uh, the pool deck and enjoy the sail away party as we were leaving Galveston. Uh, we turned on the airplane mode for our phone so not to get hit by those international roaming charges and connected to the Dream Wi-Fi. At this point, the Carnival app was active and we could get information on uh, menus for dining uh, areas, for activities that were going on, um, any virtual queues like for customer service or excursion desk we could join virtual queues and, and the app was, was completely functional. Just to know, as, as a side note, as, as I said, uh, kind of a tip, before your cruise, before you connect to your cruise ship's Wi-Fi, your Carnival Hub app is really just a gateway that will, most options will just push you back to carnival.com. So before you leave for your cruise, before you connect to the um, cruise ship's Wi-Fi, go ahead and do most of your interaction with Carnival on Carnival.com, logging in. That's where you'll do your check-in, um, review your account, add excursions that you want to pick beforehand, add drinks packages beforehand and that. So our tip is before you leave home, do all your interaction with Carnival.com, save the app, for when you connect to the ship's Wi-Fi, that's when it's the most functional and useful to you. Um, it is a, a good app, but only useful once you're on the ship. So that was our experience. Uh, let me know below, anything surprise you about the embarkation experience? Um, what was, you know, was it what you expected? Um, did you learn something? Uh, give us a comment, let us know, what do you, what do you think? Thanks for being here. So we had fun and stay tuned for a few more videos on our, our experience on the Carnival Dream out of Galveston. At Storyline Travel, we believe every adventure is a story waiting to be told.